So guys, today we're going to be talking about and doing a review and showing some use on these two Mora Eldresses. Now before we get started with this review, I have a couple things I want to go over. As always, of course guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you're not already because that really helps this channel and it really helps what I do. The other thing I want to note is a quick thank you to the person who provided both of these for the testing and review. And I will leave a link to his YouTube channel down in the uh, description below. And that is Sweet Costa Rica. He's another Alaskan bushcrafting YouTuber, but he's based out of Anchorage. And he doesn't post super frequently, but he was nice enough over this past winter to send me two more Eldresses and the Silky Big Boy that you guys see me use quite frequently and I really just wanted to give him a shout out in this review because he really deserves it. Definitely go check out his channel and subscribe to him too. Okay guys, now that that is all out of the way, let's hop into the field test portion of this so that you guys can get an idea of just how these knives perform. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed that quick field use and kind of test of both of these knives. Now let's actually talk about both of these. Now for the past few months you guys have been seeing these two knives used actually quite extensively by me and there's no mistaking for that and there's definitely reason for me using these knives so much and that is that ever since the the dawn of these knives, I've always really loved them. Now these knives tend to be a really hit and miss in the bushcrafting and just overall outdoor community. Some people, they either really love this knife, like me, or they just can't stand it. And that was my friend Sweet Costa Rica. He honestly did not like these knives at all but I wanted to give them a try so I asked him if he could send me one. He actually awesome enough sent me two and that is how I got my hands on them and like I said from the outset even pictures and videos I knew I was really going to love this. So ever since I saw these knives and really first found out about them I knew that they were going to be instantly some of my favorite knives and that has come very true especially now that I've had a couple and I've had them for a few months. Oh, and to the design of these knives and I think this is the part that people either understand and they love about these knives or don't understand or don't integrate and that's I think the primary reason why people don't like it and that is that these knives are designed to be true in the most pure sense of a companion knife and what a companion knife is essentially designed to do is to complement a larger knife. So if you're running something even as small as a Garberg or just anything that's a little bit too small or a little bit too large to really do super fine tasks, 
this is where this knife comes in. It's a nice, very lightweight option for doing very fine, very delicate, and very precise tasks. And it's also designed to not take up much room and be reasonably lightweight. I think of other knives in the same range are definitely most notably the SC Azula and Azula 2 are in the same range as this. Another one that's not quite as popular but probably most closely related to this is the Heli Nying and those kinds of knives are designed to be companion or maybe even survival kit knives but primarily just companion with especially the Nying and like I said these knives, especially the more Eldresses, uh, I found to be very capable of what they've done and actually very competent at being bushcrafting knives or fine delicate crafting knives. Especially because if you'll notice with the Eldress, they've actually scalloped or whatever you want to call this, they've put a relief cut right here on the grind and this allows there especially in the belly of this knife though it doesn't have much belly to be an extremely thin knife for just super fine processing of different crafts and i'm always amazed at how well this knife or the more Eldris digs into wood and can craft and especially since it has such a short blade it's very easy to navigate it and do more complicated carving maneuvers also found this knife to be very good at natural material slash food processing. This knife is a designed really pure uh, game processor slash food processor slash natural material processor. Once again, given the fact that this has a very thin blade stock and then it's reduced even thinner in the belly by having a relief cut onto the Scandinavian grind. It is in a very, very fine slicing knife in its capabilities in nimbleness when slicing through natural materials such as the skin of an animal or through funguses to process them is very good. As well, in addition to that, the very short blade makes it a far more controllable knife to use for processing small game animals as well as once again processing smaller you know funguses and stuff like that. So that's essentially my use with this knife or knives both of them. Another thing I really liked and I hope I was able to show quite well in the um, test video was how sharp these spines are. Of course on their newer lineup, Mora's newer lineup, the Garberg, the Kanspool, and of course the Eldris, they've actually taken time to sharpen the spine on all of them. And like I said, the Eldris is no exception. It has a very, very sharp spine that is quite exceedingly good at throwing very hot sparks off of a ferro rod and it easily ignited that birch bark and you guys could see that is another area where I think I really like this knife personally is in the very fine level of processing firewood. This is by no means a batoning champion. It's not going to do that for you at all, but when it comes to processing wood and feather sticking, scratching up the birch bark, doing all those things, it does it very well. And then on top of that, you can flip it right around and you have a very sharp spine for striking your ferro rod. And that was something that I really did appreciate about, uh, appreciate about this knife. So now getting into edge retention. As far as this goes, I believe it uses 14C28N Sandvik steel. Just like with the Garberg, it uses the same steel as the Garberg. I've had no issues with this steel and retention, edge retention. I found it to be just adequate for what I needed, needed it to do. And as far as stainlessness goes, while well, I was really optimistic about getting into the stainless steels that Mora had to offer, these stainless steels have proved to be just fine. And I really honestly have, I've been honestly happily surprised to see that the edge retention has not been terrible and that the rust resistance is still pretty good. So the next part is ergonomics. As far as ergonomics go, this knife, much like the Conspool and the Garberg, I love. I think the ergonomics on all three knives, they took a lot of time to think them out and to really 
try and understand the best possible ergonomics for these knives. And I think they've really won with all three of them because especially up here in the front, as I noted on the Garberg, this is a very neutral handle. So overall, this handle is completely symmetrical. So why I really like that, especially for bushcrafting, is that it allows you to hold it like this and allows you to hold it like this, 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 you know, pretty much every single direction you're going to hold this knife, especially in bushcrafting when you do actually use a lot of these different types of handling or holding of the knife, I find it to be very good because that means that the way it feels in your hand like this is the exact same that it feels like this. That means that you're not going to get any hot spots holding it like this or like this or vice or, or once again holding it in a pinch grip. Either way, you're going to have the same exact hold. There's not going to be any hot spots or any ergonomic issues to worry about because the handle is made not just comfortable, but also symmetrical. Another thing I will say, and this is not on the Garberg, but this is on the Conspool and on the Eldris, is they've rubberized the exterior plastic. So this middle plastic here is hard, just like the Garberg, but on these outer sides of it is all heavily rubberized and I find it to be very comfortable. It's much like the Mora Clipper and Companion. It's very comfortable. It provides very good grip. Uh, even when wet, it really does provide adequate grip for you. Now personally for me, and this is another area where some people may or may not like this knife, but personally for me this handle actually does fit my hand. It's just barely there, but for me it has enough size to it that it just works. And I'm not really hanging off the knife, you guys can see just barely there, but for the most part I'm not really hanging off and I can get a very positive, very confident grip on this knife and that was one of the things the ergonomics was really one of the biggest draws for me to this knife because once again it had such a tiny blade that it was very capable for doing the fine crafting and natural resource processing that I wanted it to do but at the same time it had a large enough handle that if I wanted to hold this knife and do crafting or processing for a long or extended period of time I didn't worry about having hot spots or you know having like a pinky hanging off of this knife it's a very comfortable knife for me to hold for extended periods of time and that is something else I really like about it so now going over to sheaths. So with sheaths, especially on the more Eldris, there are a couple different types of sheathing options you can get. So from the factory, you do have to order it either way, but the very base option looks like this. Of course, you won't get this necklace. This was a custom edition for me, but if you just get this knife, this is what it will come with, minus this necklace. It'll look just like this, just the sheath and the knife. But you can get an upgraded option that actually looks like this, where they will send you the necklace or just like, it's just a piece of paracord. Uh, and then most importantly, they send you this strap. And I really like this strap. <clears throat> I think it is really awesome idea. And I love that Mora went over to this really modular system with their sheaths and how you can add the things that you want or take away the things you don't want with these types of multi-mount sheaths. I really love that idea. So once again, this is primarily what you're adding when you get their more advanced setup. With the more advanced setup, you also get a ferro rod, which I believe is made by Light My Fire. And I've used or been using that ferro rod for quite some time. And I do will say it is a very good ferro rod. Keep in mind, it does not come with any handle. So it's just a bare blank ferro rod with a little lanyard hole drilled through it. But if you can get past that, it is actually a really good ferro rod. And that also comes with this system. And if you look at the instructions, sorry, just dropped the knife. But if you look at the instructions, they want you to add the ferro rod onto the necklace of this knife. And that part, I don't really agree with because you kind of want the ferro rod detached from the knife. But whatever, they had to find a way to include it on the knife. But that setup. I would say for the most part, if you do end up getting this strap, it will come with the necklace and the ferro rod. That setup is pretty good if you don't have a ferro rod or if you're really a beginning bushcrafter and you're kind of 
looking at trying to get a really squared away companion knife setup, I think that this option would be really good to go for. But in all honesty, if you already have paracord like me and you already have your fair share of ferro rods, you could probably honestly just stick to this model. I mean, I like this strap and it does add a level of security, but in my opinion, I think it's primarily decorative because this knife, I'm not really that scared of it falling out, even over time. And the primary reason is one, there's a really good retention on this knife, you can see. But secondly, this knife is legitimately so lightweight that with real neck knives, like the one I'm wearing around me now, or right now, uh, it could actually fall out of its sheath or be more prone to falling out of its sheath because this knife actually weighs you know a bit this thing weighs around an ounce and a half or two ounces it's super lightweight I think it's something like that it's just very very lightweight so even if you didn't have this strap I'd be very surprised if this knife came out under especially any normal conditions but even under rigorous conditions I'd be quite surprised if the knife came out just for the fact that like I said it's such a lightweight knife that it's very hard to shake it out of here let alone the retention of the knife in this sheath is already quite adequate. So that's just kind of my opinions on the two sheathing options. I do personally like the red more and so I personally run this one more but that's because primarily I like this maroon colored red especially the handle color this very dark maroon red I really love this color um, I, this is something else I've really enjoyed about the Mora especially Gans Bull and the Eldris they've offered a lot of color options and I think that's really awesome because it just allows you to add just a little bit more personality and flavor to your bushcrafting setup. So anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this look at and talk about the more Eldris as a knife, as a neck knife. And once again, I think it is a very good companion knife. It's definitely not meant to be a do-all, like ultimate survival knife. I think this knife also has a very good fit with a lot of survival kits. I've incorporated the Mora Eldris into quite a few survival kits as certainly an option for people who want a smaller fixed blade and that might be another good place to fit the Mora Eldris if you want a fixed blade that's still small, lightweight, tough, and can strike a ferro Anyways, rod. Anyways guys, that's all for now. I'm out.